What is good everyone? I hope you are all doing well. Today we are going to be taking a look at the PC performance for Star Wars Battlefront 2, which is coming out at the beginning of next month, but it's actually currently in open beta. If you do want to access the beta, you can do so over on the Origin app. All you have to do is go to the free game section and download the beta and you can play it. You don't need to have the game pre-ordered or anything. They did do an early access starting on Wednesday if you have the game pre-ordered and I got into a whole fiasco with that because I didn't order uh, pre-order it in time. I really didn't even plan on picking this game up, but I only pre-ordered it so I can get an early jump on doing performance testing. And then that didn't work out, so I ended up canceling the pre-order, waiting for the open beta to start. And that is what we are going to be focusing on here today with the PC performance. I'm not really a big fan of these games of Battlefront 1 or Battlefront 2. It's kind of like the most casual game that's ever casualed when you're trying to casual, so all the casuals are casually casualing. So really not my genre of game, even though I love shooters. And I love Star Wars, but the gameplay and the combat is just, like I said, it's so casual that I just cannot get my head into this game at all, despite loving the visuals, the graphics, the theme of it being Star Wars and all of that. So I'm, I'm probably not going to pick this game up unless the single player comes out and is really good. The first game didn't have a single player story, but this one is going to have a single player story. So if we find out that the single player comes out and it's it's amazing and it's a good 8 to 12 hour campaign, then I might go pick it up just for the single player because I am such a huge Star Wars fan. But hopefully today with this video we can at least put to rest any concerns you may have about the performance of the game on your graphics card. So we'll be testing on AMD as well as Nvidia cards. And if you do decide you want to pick it up after hopefully trying out the beta and watching this video, then you could do so with my link over to CD Keys down in the description, which helps support the channel and you do save a few bucks as well. It's only $48 over there right now, which is about $12 below what Origin would be selling it for. So you do get to save a few bucks and support the channel in the process. And that link will be down in the description. But yeah, let's get into talking about performance. But before we do that, let's go into the options menu like we always do. And uh, yeah, I was testing on ultra settings this time and the game ran fantastic on all of the four graphics cards that I tested at 1080p and 1440p. So you can see here right now I'm running in full screen at 2560 by 1440. The game does support ultra wide. It actually does support 3440 by 1440. Great. The multiplayer is supporting it. Even the menus are supporting ultra wide. So they've done a good job as far as that is concerned. And you can get your high refresh rate support as well or just disable you know, frame, uh, the lock at all if you want. You just turn VSync off, which is what I did for all of my testing. They do have a DirectX 12 option in here, but I did test on DX11 and, of course, VSync off. Now, oddly enough, the field of view right now in the beta is completely locked. Like, by default, this actually showed 55, but the reason mine is completely grayed out is because I found a config tweak over on the Battlefront subreddit that you can do in order to raise... The field of view to whatever value you want. I set mine to 90 for all of my testing and I'll leave a link to that subreddit uh, post down in the description below as well. So if you want to, you know, on the open beta at least go and have to adjust your field of view to get something better than 55 so you don't feel like you're looking through a toilet roll trying to aim in first person mode, then I would definitely check out that, uh, that, that reddit post there. Resolution scaling here I had up at 100%. You can actually adjust the user interface mode as well if you want to change it between 1080p and 4K. I just left that at 1080p though, honestly, which is fine. I don't really need a 4K UI. Uh, HUD scaling I had at 100%. Graphics quality is on custom, but it's basically ultra. Everything cranked up as high as you can go. In here for, te for tweaking, we've got texture quality, texture filtering, lighting quality, shadow quality, effects quality, post-process, mesh, terrain, terrain ground cover, anti-aliasing, and ambient occlusion. For the anti-aliasing solution, I'm using TAA, which is temporal anti-aliasing, but they do also have FXAA high, medium, and low, or you can disable anti-aliasing altogether, but I found that TAA gave the best solution without blurring out the textures, which kind of happens on FXAA. I really wish they had SMAA in this game, but unfortunately they do not. And it's really nice that you can actually see it dynamically changing in the background as well, just going between these options here. You can see the lines getting smoothed out as I click through them. So that's, that's nice that they have that there. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the performance numbers now. And uh, starting off with the RX 580 and the GTX 1060, the footage on your screen you'll be seeing right now is in 1080p, and both of these cards handled that extremely well. They both got averages over 80 FPS and never dipped down below 60 
during my play testing in the multiplayer, which is where I did this benchmark on the large game mode. I can't remember what it's called right now, but it's like 40 players. It's like their version of Rush from Battlefield, but in Star Wars Battlefront. So yeah, RX 580 and GTX 1060 both ran the game fantastic at 1080p. At 1440p, both of them had averages around 60 FPS. There were some dips down below 60, but both of them still ran it really well. With RX Vega 56 and the GTX 1080, the, no the numbers for these two cards were actually a lot closer than I had anticipated. The GTX 1080 is surprisingly not winning by that much. All the footage you're seeing right now is at 1440p, but the average FPS only ended up being a difference of 10 here between these two cards, which is a lot closer than I honestly expected it. And both of these cards should be good as well for ultra wide if you wanted to do 3440 by 1440. I did briefly test that, although I didn't do any benchmarks for it. But both cards were running around 60 FPS, so you shouldn't really have any issues with either card, honestly, playing at 3440 by 1440. But let's get into the average FPS now and then the 1% lows. So as you can see, going across here in descending order, we've got the 1080 Vega 56, RX 580, and GTX 1060 at 1080 and 1440p. With the GTX 1080 at the top there getting 145 FPS at 1080p and 95 at 1440p. On Vega 56, we've got 128 average and 85 respectively for 1080 and 1440. So that's where you're seeing the difference there between the 1080 and the RX Vega 56. Only 10 FPS difference at 1440p. And as I said, that's closer than I expected to see that there. And the RX 580 and the 1060, very close, really neck and neck. But the game is running better on the RX 580 right now, and seeing how close Vega 56 is to the 1080, I'm inclined to think that this game is better optimized for AMD graphics cards in general. I mean, it's so close between 580 and 1060 at 1440p, it's almost within the margin of error, but since they are winning in both, I would. it seems like the game is a bit better optimized for AMD graphics cards, and you can see that as well in the 1% lows. The 580 and the 1060 both tied at 1% lows, uh, for for the for the, at, at a 1440p ball at 1080p the RX 580 once again won by 3 FPS and with Vega 56 and the GTX 1080 the 1% low for 1440 only a difference of 6 FPS so Vega 56 running the game really well the 1080 running it pretty good too although I would I have to imagine that if I had a Vega 64 card to test unfortunately I don't I have a feeling it might actually beat out the GTX 1080 in this particular title because of how well optimized it seems to be for AMD right now. And both of these cards were tested on the latest drivers. So for NVIDIA, that was 385.69. And for AMD, it was 17.9.3, all in my frame rate build along with the i7-7700K there. So nothing getting in the way, really, of our benchmarking as far as the CPU is concerned. And it's just... Yeah, like I said, running great ag across all of these different graphics cards, and if it's not, then you should be able to tweak it if you have a, a lesser, you know, GPU, maybe like a GTX 970. I'm sure you're going to be absolutely fine in this game at 1080p, and probably 1440p you should do pretty well too. It, maybe you have to tweak a couple things down to high, like shadows and ambient occlusion, but for the most part, I think even something around like an R9 390, GTX 970 is going to be fine. Almost completely maxed out in this game at 1080p and 1440p, so... Really no issues at all with the performance in Battlefront 2. Like I said though, not really my type of game, so I'm not going to be playing it all that much unfortunately, which is a shame because I do love Star Wars so much. But if you're going to be picking up Battlefront 2, let me know down in the comments below and be sure to use my link over to CD Keys. And I am going to go ahead and get on out of here. So if you enjoy this performance analysis for Star Wars Battlefront 2, you know what to do. Leave a like on the video down below, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Yeah, subscribe if you're not already. I feel like I lost my words there. I was like, wait, what, what do I what do I say next here? I, I forgot words. I, I have I usually have all the best words. I put the best words you could believe me. Okay, but I'm gonna get out of here now. Okay, peace out, boy, tara, all that good stuff. Okay, believe me. I'm gonna go now. Believe me. Believe me. <laughs>